super smooth. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a 2022 Toyota Highlander L. First and foremost, though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry Miller Toyota here in Murray for giving me some time with the Highlander. Check out the inventory link below. Let's get into the video. So under the hood, we have a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6 that goes through an eight-speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 20 around town and then 27 on the highway with power outputs being 295 horsepower and then 263 pound-feet of torque. Now let's go to the front end of the Highlander L. So first off, I love this paint color because it really accentuates the body lines here on the Highlander. But coming down below, you can see we've got the projector bulbs right here with the turn signal just integrated next to it. And then notice how the grill has been blacked out in the center portion, but then we've got the silver all around the rest of it. So it kind of pops out a little bit more. Got the Toyota logo that doubles as a sensor. And then notice how you've got the accent piece off to the side right there, which you know doesn't necessarily do anything but it looks good and then you can see everything else down here is also darker in coloration and other than that well sorry about my shadow but there's the front end now coming on the side here we've got two 35 millimeter tires wrapped around 18 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear as well and then you can see the coloration on the wheels themselves they just did kind of like a basic silver design which makes sense because again this is more of like an entry level package on the highlander and then notice how we have the little fender flare that goes around that kind of has a mud flap there at the bottom which is pretty cool the mirrors are body painted as well as the door handles you've got another mud flap there in the rear and there is your full side view so here's our key fob, pretty basic. You've got the Highlander logo there on the back. Well, the Toyota logo with the Highlander logo on the back. And then you have your unlock and your lock. Now, this one has a hydraulic lift gate for the rear, so you just have to lift it up yourself, but it's super easy. Now, popping here into the rear, notice that we have the Highlander mat here, and it continues up onto the back of the seat. So when you have the seat folded down, you don't have to worry about damaging the bottom of the seat. And then also it makes cleanup a little bit easier as well. And there's even a hole there for the strap, which is cool. Got the cup holders there for the back passengers. And yeah, other than that, that's everything for that portion of the rear. And then we do have a little bit of extra storage. You just have to pull up that loop and you can see all that stuff. Also, you know, if you get strained on the side of the road, you got some tools to help out with uh, getting you back on. And there is this handle right here, but it's easier just to grab the back of the hatch and then throw it down. Now finishing things up with the rear, notice here we've got the basic Highlander taillights is the best way to put it. They still have a blacked out element on the top, which I think looks great. Got our all wheel drive badge to signify that it has all-wheel drive and yeah other than that things are pretty simple there now here's the door panel in the rear so notice we've got this cloth trim right here and then there actually is some nice padding down below it got our window control right there and then you can see the door handle itself and then here are the seats in the second row so i really like the design here with the cloth seats and then notice you've got all of the adjustments and everything there for the seat but let's pop in quickly so here's a quick look at le leg room and then you can see headroom as well. You do have the climb controls just down here for the second row passengers. Some USB ports so they can charge devices. And then we've got this armrest cup holder situation. Uh, normally we pop to the front, but now we're going to pop to the very rear. So I'm going to try to do this with one hand. So just pull that and then it's on a track. And then I can just push that right there. So pretty easy to do and you can do it with one hand. That's awesome. Notice that there's another rubber floor covering right here. And then as for this seat, all I have to do is just push it and then it is uh, popped up. But we're gonna kind of slip back here and pop in. So uh, I'd have to have my feet like right there. So uh, yeah, I think suffice to say, I would reserve the uh, third row for kids. You do have a recline function, so that would give you a little bit more uh, headroom but i will say getting in i did hit my head uh on this as well so <laughs> again reserve it for kids but let's head to the front now here's a door panel at the front so again we've got the cloth trim with the padding just down below it all of our window controls the mirror adjustments and there's a quick look at the mirror itself and then here is the front seat so again similar design as what you have in the rear with a little bit more aggressive bolstering it does have power adjustments there are the pedals just down below. That's just the gas cap release right there, and then that's for the lights. And then that padding is also right here on the side, and you can see the vent right there, kind of the design of that. Steering wheel is manually adjustable, and there's where I'm gonna look before we pop in.
So here's the steering wheel, pretty basic from a material standpoint. We have our cruise control here, and then this is for the follow function, and then the lane departure, and then like the radio voice command, controls, phone controls, controls for the center display right there. And then you got your turn signal light stock, got your windshield wiper stock, and it's off the steering wheel. Now going over the gauge cluster itself, uh, first off you guys can see here you've got a few different menus you can scroll through to give you different bits of information on the Highlander. Uh, pretty normal stuff what you have in other Toyotas and then I like the fact they still have analog gauges on either side with this model. Uh, you can get kind of like a big screen with the higher up packages in the Highlander but this is nice if you don't like the whole like big screen thing so it's cool that they still offer that. Now speaking of big screens, we still get a really decently sized infotainment system. So first off, there is the backup camera. Now the trajectory lines uh, are fixed. They don't turn with the steering wheel or anything like that. Uh, but as for the infotainment system itself, response time with the buttons on the outside is really good. And then pressing the screen itself, response time with that is also solid. It's easy to use. I like how they have a bunch of shortcut buttons, so that makes it even more user friendly. And I think it's pretty nicely integrated into the dash because it has like the climate controls down below with this. And if you're wondering, this has tri-zone climate, even, this is, even though this is an entry level package, you still have the dual zone for the front and then the climate there in the rear, which you can control all via this. And again, I really like the look of the vents. Again, stop start button, and then we've got more soft touch trim right here. And then you've got some extra storage space there. And then above the glove box. And uh, this like is almost a grab handle or this down below as well. But again, it's for the storage, but it looks like you could almost uh, grab onto it, which is kind of interesting. And then we've got some USBs right here and then a 12 volt. And then you've got some extra storage right there next to it. Shifter for the eight speed automatic. It does have manual shift function. We've got some cup holders right here, and then we have our drive mode select, which will pop up here in the center. So we've got an eco, we've got a normal, and then we have a sport, and it just lets you know uh, right there in the center which drive mode you are in. If you're normal, it doesn't show anything, which makes sense. And then over here, we have a mud and sand, and then you have normal again. So you have like two different ways to get into normal, which is interesting. And then you have a rock and dirt. And then you can see the parking brake auto hold. You've got the stability control snow mode, hill descent, and then auto stop start. And I just realized why they have this this way. So like if I press this to go into mud and sand, and then I try to get into normal mode here, I'd go into eco mode first, and then I have to go up into normal. So I understand now why they have two controls for that. Good thinking, Toyota. But here is the uh, center console. You can see this slides backwards and forwards. I like the actuation on this. It's really easy. And then I like the fact that you can still use this as an armrest even when it's open. So like if you have this filled up with stuff, uh, but you want it open, you can still use it. Whereas most center consoles, you have to flip up a lid. So I think this is very ingeniously engineered. And then got the glove box. Nice. But we've got a sunglass holder here and then notice that we have the mirror there for the rear. So you can look at the kiddos in the back and then lighter colored headliner. Now here's a window sticker on this Highlander. Sorry about my reflection, but here is the standard equipment. Feel free to freeze the frame if you actually want to read everything. And then you can see the optional equipment right there. And then you can see the total MSRP, $38,602. And wait for it. Let's take it out and see how it drives. Well, let's quickly go over visibility before we set off. So there's your visibility of the hood, both of the mirrors, and then throughout the rest of the rear. And with all that being said, let's set off. So we are initially setting off here in the Highlander and it's got auto stop start. So the engine is off. It's really seamless actually. I didn't even notice it pop off. I only noticed the icon. We'll see what happens when it starts up. You hear it, but again, it's a pretty seamless system. It's not obnoxious or anything like that. But initially getting up and moving here with the Highlander, first off, ride quality is really good. Yeah, definitely smooth from a suspension standpoint. So that is a big positive. And then aside from that road noise, pretty minimal. Yeah, going over stuff doesn't upset it. It's really good from a suspension standpoint. It's very comfortable. I will say that. And then kind of just like the initial getting up and going, it's, it's great. The transmission seems really smooth. And it's just, it's a comfortable vehicle to drive. Just a really comfortable vehicle to drive. So yeah, initially the Highlander's doing really good. So going over the train tracks and then we'll get our acceleration here. Yeah, it does pretty good over the train tracks. Super smooth. Yeah, it's actually really good from an acceleration standpoint. And uh, the eight speed on max, very smooth. I'm gonna go into the manual mode and just do a couple of manual shifts with this. 
Okay, downshift do take a second. It's not the quickest transmission, but it's very smooth. Uh, I can tell they've tuned this more towards the luxury side. Um, so they haven't made it super snappy even in the sport mode with the gear shifts and that makes sense again It's supposed to be like a family vehicle you take kids around so smoothness is going to take priority over the quickest possible gear shifts Moving on from that. Let's get into setting things up and give this Highlander L a score Exterior wise the Highlander looks really good um, I will say even in this L package. I think it's still a good-looking vehicle. The wheels aren't as pretty as what you get in the higher-up packages but I mean, that's something that's easy to change out if you really wanted to have something look different. Um, but overall, I think it's a good looking vehicle uh, from an outside perspective. Interior wise, uh, everything's nice. Uh, it's got a good amount of safety tech. The seats are comfortable. Uh, these seats would actually be pretty easy to uh, clean, even though they're cloth, just with uh, how they're shaped and everything and how they don't have like super deep grooves in them. Um, it's it's gonna be, these seats would be pretty easy to clean is what I'm trying to say. And then moving on from that, from driving perspective, it's smooth, it's comfortable. Acceleration is right where it needs to be for this segment. Uh, you know, sub uh, $40,000 third row SUV. And so obviously I gotta give this a score and uh, I'm gonna give this actually an 8.5 out of 10. The reason I'm giving this such a high score, even though this is like a baseline package, is I feel like it's a really good value. So third row SUV gets good fuel economy, has good safety tech. Uh, it's very comfortable to drive. It's just a really uh, solid vehicle and the pricing on it's very reasonable. And so I, I think overall it's just, it's it's a good vehicle. And something I just noticed with the auto stop start is it told me to press the brake more and then the auto stop start with act, would activate. That's kind of cool that it lets you know like you're not pressing the brake hard enough for the system to turn on. And this also gave me a timer letting me know how much time I have the engine shut off. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, the new Highlander, uh, it's, it's solid. Now let's get something's up for this 2022 Toyota Highlander L. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry Schmiller, Toyota here in Murray for giving me some time with the Highlander. Check out their inventory link below. I'll see all of you in the next video.